Good morning. Thank you all for coming out today. My name is Scott Brandt. I am the chair of the candidate endorsement committee for the Green Party of Monroe County. This year we've endorsed several candidates uh, who will be running for the seats available on city council, school board, and also our candidate for mayor. Rochester is made up of people from all walks of life. People from many different and diverse backgrounds. The individuals standing here today bring a wealth of experience and energy to this year's race. But they also carry with them a commonly felt frustration. For far too long, the city of Rochester has had unanimous, single party political control. Rochester deserves an alternative. A democratically elected government doesn't have to mean choosing between a bunch of different candidates from the same party. It's time to turn our city green in 2013. My name is Lori Thomas, and I am a lifelong citizen of Rochester. I was employed as a trash collector for the city for 18 years. I recently retired as a Rochester City School District teacher after 17 years, so I'm familiar with the workings of both the city and the district. My experience in teaching gave me the opportunity to realize the joys of the classroom, but it also allowed me to see the system and the system's inherent dysfunction and how it proposes more harm than good, creating more problems than solutions. I'm running for school board commissioner because I believe that you can't ask others to do something unless you're willing to do it yourself. You have to become involved and prove your level of commitment by placing yourself in a position to support them when they become involved. It's time for the citizens of Rochester to vote for leaders who want and are able to affect change. Change that will move us from failure to success, from the bottom to the top. Thank you. My name is Dorothy Page and I am running for city council with the Green Party. I feel that the lives and the quality of life of the people of Rochester are the most important things that city council should address. There are many issues that need to be dealt with concerning housing. The quality and quantity of housing needs to be improved for both renters, homeowners, and the homeless. We need to expand the opportunities for everyone to own a home. I believe that our city can be improved by the commitment and hard work of the residents of Rochester and city leaders as the employees of the people. My name is Drew Langley and it is a pleasure to be here today on this beautiful May Day. Celebrated worldwide is International Workers Day. And on this day, I am pleased to accept the Green Party's endorsement for City Council as we launch our campaign to reconstruct Rochester to prioritize the people and the planet over corporate profits. For too long, our city has relied on large corporations for our economic development, large corporations that have no commitment to the well-being of our community. As a city council member, we must take the lead on democratizing our economy. We must commit to the widespread creation of worker-owned cooperatives to provide living wage jobs to every Rochesterian. Using the successful models that you can find in Cleveland, Ohio, and Montreal, Spain, we can build economic institutions rooted in the community without risk of relocation we can create workplaces where instead of excessive CEO salaries, all workers are paid fairly. It is time for a change. It is time for a green Rochester. Thank you. I, I cannot fully express how excited and honored I am to be a part of this slate uh, in the city of Rochester. We are calling ourselves Green Rochester. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> The, the months ahead are gonna be very exciting. Uh, we do appreciate the one party rule that's been going on and the, the people who have been in office over these decades have been faithful public servants, but we do feel that there needs to be a different voice, a different perspective, and that is what we're gonna be bringing to this campaign. Once we're elected, we'll be working with those with us in office to, uh, to do some of the things that our, these candidates have talked about, but to bring in some fresh new ideas and look at our local economy in a way that hasn't been seen in probably centuries. 
I'm very excited to be here. We'll be talking a lot more about issues down the road. I hope you check out what we're doing online because we, what's there right now is just the beginning and this is gonna be a great election season. Thank you. I am excited to not be standing here alone, but to be with such a fine group of people. It is wonderful to see another party offer so many candidates to give Rochester an option which it has not had in so many years. And I'm excited to work on trying to bring our government back to the people, the neighborhoods, and the communities that it's built on, to try to strengthen them, to work with them, to focus on them, so that we can make a better Rochester for all of us. And I believe, together, we can do that. And this is gonna be an exciting election, and I hope that you will all follow it. Thanks. Yeah. Just one, basically, and this is for the candidates running for city council. We have seen, all of you that are running for city council, we have seen over the last 30 years, a city council that has become nothing more than a rubber stamp for the mayor's office. We've had some remarkably bad mayors and rarely do we see anything other than a 9-0 vote approving. What can we expect differently from you, whether it be Alex in power, the current incumbent in power, or lovely white in power? What can we expect differently from you? Well, I just feel that if the needs of the people aren't being met, that I'm not gonna approve anything just to go along with the status quo. And I think that as Green Council members, that gives us a lot of sway. Um, it takes a lot to elect a Green. It truly takes community backing to elect a Green. And if the mayor is doing, the mayor and the rest of the Democratic, the Democratic members of the council are doing something that the community does not back, we have that we have that back and we have that sway in a way that a single a single Democrat doesn't have because they're just part of the system. And I think definitely we will I'm I've committed to standing against the mayor when even Alex, I've committed to standing against any mayor. Oh if they turn on each other already, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> if they take action against the people. One, one of the key differences that I think between the Green who holds office and maybe one of the uh, other candidate or people in the other parties who hold office is that we don't wait for community members or groups to come to us. Once we're in office, we continue our dialogue with the community on an ongoing basis. I can tell, I, I'm not going to speak for the other candidates, even though we are similar in, in terms of the threads and the things that we'd like to accomplish. But when I'm elected, I will be making sure that there is an ongoing dialogue, both online and face-to-face -face and through other media, that I'm in constant contact with what the community wants. And I will use that power to not just vote 8-1 or 6-3 or, or, or whatever it's going to be, but to actually bring folks who give me their ideas and use that power in the council chambers. Right, so this is uh, maybe a vote that council has taken that you disagreed with personally? I, I actually, I would like to, I don't have a, I don't want to do a specific one. I'd like to do a, a more of a topic one. Uh, I will, um, all of the votes uh, that have been done on any kind of development where there's been enormous tax breaks, low interest loans that don't get paid back, all of those nine nothing votes. Um, that I will stand up against to the best of my ability without getting arrested. Um, <laughs> to those kind of votes. Well, I saved my arrest for work. So. <laughs> uh, those are the votes that really, probably for myself, the main reason I'm running is time after time, There's unless there's uh, an abstention because of a conflict of interest, but they're, je they're all unanimous in terms of the, the money that we're giving away. We have a deficit every single year in our budget, and yet nobody wants to say, hmm, and we're giving away even more money in terms of our tax revenue, and they're not, and that's not being equated. So I, I, I know, Brian, you asked me for a specific legislation. Right, so on that, you, you would not support incentives for development? 
not through tax breaks. There could, if, I, I am a big believer in if the developers come in, if they can't finance it, then maybe they shouldn't be the developers. Um, I, but there are other kinds of incentives that you can use. Actually, the, making sure that our infrastructure is up to snuff, making sure our schools are up to snuff. A lot of the surveys that are done, tax breaks are way low on the list of incentives for corporations to either move in or build, but they know they can get them, so they go after them. And it's actually the easiest thing. Municipalities throw them at developers and corporations. When really, when you ask CEOs what's on their list of what makes them develop or move, it's infrastructure, it's school districts in, the, in, this, in, in that kind of thing. It's, it's way more higher priorities. But that's what I would focus on because actually those incentives actually benefit everybody in this area. So yeah, if it's just straight out tax breaks, low interest loans, I think I would rather be using that money to help develop small locally owned businesses, preferably co-ops, than, than something that's owned by people who don't even live. Yeah, I feel the same, that we give too many breaks to the corporations and the people of Rochester don't get jobs out of those developments. So I think they should hire local workers, train local workers, and make people be able to have a living wage, and then the city's getting something back for what we're putting into it. It's hard to choose something because it is. The Democratic Party has failed the city, and what they, what Dorothy and Dave said definitely, um, the money is being spent on the wrong things. We're giving away money. There, just a block away, there is a housing project in a city with hundreds of vacant houses. They sold that land over on Plymouth for a dollar to develop that lot in downtown. That is unnecessary. We can build, we can build an economy without handing over our money. We can build a city that has public services, that has living wage jobs without giving away the public wealth. Uh, uh, the September changes to the zoning, Section 120, that created high-impact businesses. Parts of it have already been found illegal in courts. Um, and I feel that the one thing I would hope our city council does, and any of the members, would be stop voting for things that are illegal. I think that's a really important issue that is ignored, that over and over again, council votes for something like the curfew, perhaps the biggest example, that ended up being illegal, and in the appeal, the judge virtually mocked them for not knowing that this was gonna happen. And, you know, at that level, either our legal counsel is incompetent, or our councilmen don't care whether it's illegal. Councilmen and women don't care if it's illegal. And I would hope that anyone here would at least consider not voting for illegal things. I'll, I'll take that pledge. <laughs> pledge not to vote for illegal things. Lori, yes. this is for the school board. You were a teacher for a number of years. Yeah. And you have seen the fiasco that goes on in that school board. Yes. We have a system that is failing our students. It is failing the taxpayers. They're consistently running for office and rerunning for office, saying that they're on the right track. What will you be able to bring us that's different from all these failed incumbents on school board running for re-election? I believe that there are already members on the school board that want change, but they also need support to affect that change. And so with me on school board, they will have the support to um, change our system of education. The corporate system of education that's currently in place is designed to make profits for the corporation, not success for, ch for children. Mary Adams, uh, in some instances, Willa Powell, uh, Van White, they are caught in this 4-3 split um, from wanting to do the right thing, from wanting to change the system into a child-centered system. But they are, again, caught in that 4-3 split. Okay? With the added support, we can begin to change, not reform education, not reform the corporate culture of education, but actually change the system of education so that it concentrates on our children and not on the profits of corporations. 
for the city council, I think a lot of what we're going to be doing, because we're going to be so based uh, on our issues in the community, is I think we'll be helping neighborhoods and families to the point where that will have an effect on the school district as well. Uh, I, I think a lot of the things that you'll be seeing us roll out in terms of our, plat our individual and collective platforms will have an effect on what goes on in the schools, and vice versa. Yes. And, and if I may, it, it's, it, I see it as being very important that we have like-minded people as leaders of city government. We have like-minded people now, and I'm not saying that they're not successful in what they do, they are, but we need to change what we're doing and create an infrastructure. And the, the hub of that infrastructure, as far as I'm concerned, is the neighborhood school. It's creating that neighborhood school community and then rebuilding the Rochester community from that. Summit, the transportation summit yesterday, and they kept talking about bikeable and walkable areas and how the city has a, a biking plan and their master plan, and that's wonderful. And some of the things I saw and heard there was great, but then I thought about things like uh, we don't have neighborhood schools. And there, people were complaining that our kids can't bike and, and walk to school anymore. Well, if you're getting bussed on the other side of town at six o'clock in the morning, I, how are you going to bike or walk to school? And then I'm thinking, we want more kids to be on their bikes, and the police department, as a way of uh, intervening, is going around harassing young black kids on bikes. So we want kids to be out there biking, just, I guess, to wait to, so the police can harass them. And we're not really working together, the different parts, the school district, city hall, the police department, we're not really working together in a holistic way that actually affects the things that we're trying to achieve. And so a lot of the, what Lori's saying, the things being based in the neighborhood, and I'll go back to what I was talking about earlier, Brian, the stuff about tax breaks. That, that money leaves. That money leaves town. And we don't see it again. And that, so our emphasis is going to be on money that's here, that'll stay here, and will continue to stay here and develop what? The things that we really need to be successful with. You can get a hold of us, greenrochester.org. It is up, it's live, though there's a lot more coming. There's and thank great. you for coming out, everyone. Thank, thank you so you much. much. Say goodbye to plastic and goodbye to cars.